Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us. This is Bill Acevedo with Dell OMNM Tech Talk. Today we are presenting group operations. The session will be recorded and distributed, and it should take about 10 to 15 minutes in, in uh, duration. And it will be followed up with questions and answers. So uh, let's get started. If you have any questions along the way, feel free to type them in the chat window, and we will uh, review them at the end if we have time. Okay, in OMNM, there's a variety of ways to group various activities. I'm going to start off with uh, the resource manager, which is typically where people um, start their management activities. And we're going to talk about the multi-select capability. So you may already know that you can multi-select, you hold the control key down, you can select. And if we don't hover over the IP address, we won't get that pop-up. Um, select, control, button. Click, the, click what you want to select. You don't have to collect, uh, uh, select things in contiguous order. You can select things that are um, out of order. And you can also go to other pages and select. Just be, remember to hold the control key down so that you will retain those. And uh, when you have the right click option, you'll see that there's a variety of things you can do with, with, these, with these devices now, now that they're multi-selected. Um, We'll skip the new for now. That's a, a little bit of a different area. But on edit, uh, the edit screen has a variety of, of uh, attributes, three attributes that you can change across all these devices. And it's really just as simple as clicking what you want to change your uh, items to. For example, the contact and the location. If you want it to be uh, you know, anywhere or something, select. And then you say save. And then you'll notice the uh, locations column over here. Um, the contact, this should be updated when you when this is saved. So you do see them now, they got updated. And so anyway, it's a very easy way to, to uh, change those base attributes uh, for devices. It can, you can also, again, with the control, select devices, and uh, you put them on the topology just by going to visualize. So there's our few devices that we selected back. Multi-select a few more. Um, there are some options that are, that are shown, but they're not fully implemented. And the one would be management state, where you have the ability to say, put these in a suspend or decommissioned um, um, or a state of that nature. That's a feature that's coming, not quite fully there. You can do that on individual by individuals, but not in bulk. Um, change management is uh, the ability to detect changes on configurations, and of course you can you can invoke the change determination process. Whoops. Uh, you can invoke the change determination process, execute a ProScan or a ProScan policy against all these devices if you like. And uh, some of these some of these devices have a specific ProScan policies, and you have the option to execute just those, um, or there could be policies that you want to execute against all your devices. Uh, if they're common devices, a common set of devices, and you want to execute one, you'll be given those options when you go into, into those. So let's, let's just try one here. So in this case, all we're doing is we're saying any ProScan that applies to those devices, it's not picking anything specific. It's saying if I am a Juniper device or if I am a Dell switch, um, it will pick those that are assigned to that device and it will execute those. So that's why we have no options here. And then on the execute ProScan policy, this is where you get to select if you want a specific policy run against all of those devices. Of course, the policy has to be valid against those devices because you're selecting one fixed policy and it's going to run against everything. And so the commands and structure needs to be the same if it's checking the config files. Okay. And then event management, you have the ability to start alarm suppression, stop alarm suppression, Schedule it, uh, view active suppressions, and resync alarms. And then file management, um, let's do like a backup. Uh, when you go to, to backup these devices, what you'll notice here at the bottom is that um, you'll have these tabs here for the different device types in, that you've uh, selected. You've selected a multi-vendor group. And so each device has its own particular configuration, running config, startup config, and uh, Juniper has a current config, backup one, two, three, four kind of thing. And so You'll have other options. You can accept the default, and that's fine. Um, 
Um, that's one way to uh, to do. You can do um, a backup. Okay, I'll make a little group here and go to uh, something like restore. It's going to be the same thing. And uh, when you restore, um, you don't want to. Rest you're not going to restore a single file to many devices um, unless you're selecting um, all. A very similar configure across all devices. Obviously, you want to have management IPs. You want to be deploying to multiple devices. So that's usually not a typical case. But uh, when you do a restore, what it's going to do is use the, the configuration labels. And so every time a device is backed up, it gets the current label. Now, you could do a different label if you wanted to. Um, but um, the default is to use the current label, the current config, and push that out to the devices. And it will use the last one from each device. This one also has driver options. Um, Juniper has its own, own uh, restore options you would need to change or accept the default. Cisco iOS has a little bit different option. Same with the LAN switches, slightly different options. And then you can even choose protocol here. But anyway, that's a, it's very easy to, um, to restore multiple devices. If you want to restore you know, all your edge devices or something like that, you can just put those in your target here and um, um, you'd be good to go. I want you to note here that um, the add equipment, you can add specific equipment from here also if you didn't select them on the main page. And then you can also add groups here um, if, if you didn't want to go multi-select a bunch. You can select the internal group. We'll talk about those in just a minute. Those are going to be um, our predefined groups. Some of them are preceded, and then some of them can be created by users. We'll go over that in a minute. Pick another group here, file management, and then there's deploy. Now deploy is another case where you're going to deploy one firmware image to a bunch of devices, and so obviously you need a firmware image that is compatible with the devices you select for that to work. And again, you have the options for adding specific equipment and adding, uh, um, adding equipment by, by group designation. Okay. And so I want to point out, too, again, if you do one of these and you want to do some action here, like file management, uh, you know, restore, as I mentioned, you, even when you select one, you still have the option to add equipment to this, to this um, or add a group to this. You're not stuck. Just select multi-selecting or, uh, or uh, stuck with what you uh, just uh, chosen initially. Okay. Um, so the next thing is let's talk about groups. We saw we saw the, the various groups that were already created here. You see these uh, things. Typically, we have preceded groups for each of the device drivers. Uh, it's vendor by vendor, but you can call them by driver. Uh, if you have a Juniper, we got Dell a device, a Dell W series. But um, you can drive a lot of your group operations from the group manager. And so here's our group manager. I'll expand that one. And here you see the same set of groups. And for example, this Juniper Junos one, let's look at that one. This is a, um, that's not the right one, let's pick that one. I guess first what I should talk about here is the concept of static and dynamic groups. You can, uh, you can create static groups, meaning a group that has a fixed, fixed devices that you've already managed, or they're in management, that have already been discovered. And so you can go and create that group you simply just uh, give it give it some name, and then just simply add your resources here of what's already in management. And it's fixed. It won't change unless you come in here, this group, and modify it and add or remove things. That is in contrast to dynamic groups, where you don't define devices, but you define criteria uh, for the group that you want to pull into this uh, particular group. Um, it could be by you know equipment name, could be by domain. Uh, by, you know, host name in kind of thing, you can uh, uh, so you say host name in and then you could have a group of host names. Um, um, you can do it by location and have a group of locations. Um, you can group those by in or is not specified, that kind of thing. Um, so you can, you can really, you have a lot of flexibility here to, uh, to uh, determine how you want this, uh, this group created. But, what, but the, um, the main benefit of dynamic groups is that wherever you use this group, um, it will automatically be updated with new, um, new elements or new devices as they get discovered, as long as they fit this criteria. And a key example here is in the performance monitoring. 
Let's just jump over there real quick while we're talking about this. We'll come back. So, for example, your SNMP interface monitor, just pick that one here, and, um, edit. So this monitor by default is going to monitor all your devices. And so this is a dynamic group saying everything in inventory I'm going to start monitoring. But you could have a monitor that say I only want to monitor my switches, uh, my Dell switches or my particular subnets. And that could be your, your, the name of your dynamic group. And every time you discover something in that new subnet, it would automatically be added to this group and automatically be monitored because it's part of that dynamic group. You just be aware of how those get used. But let's uh, go back to our Juniper one here. Actually, we'll pick another one here. Let's pick a Dell Tower Connect for another example. You have the same right-click options here. You can go to this group directly and, and execute uh, the same functions that we saw in the Resource Manager. Um, in this case, that's a new dynamic static group. But um, you can create, uh, you can do that same edit stream. Um, you can do edit resources. Uh, Oh, these are the same edit screens here where you want to uh, update the location of contact. This edit is to edit the group. This is to edit the resource. And the same thing here. We can put the entire group onto a topology. We can run actions against the entire group. Uh, we can uh, do file management again against the entire group, link discovery resources. So this is very similar to resource manager. Just be aware you can do it from the group as well. Might be an easier way for you. Okay. Um, the last thing I think I want to throw in here, let's go to resources and actions. In, uh, in 6.2, probably service pack one, we're going to be adding this action groups portlet. And this, this gives you the ability to, to group actions. So you, can, you might have multiple ACLI scripts um, that you've created and you might want to run them in some sort of order. This allows you to batch them all up and run them all at the same time. And so I have a couple created here, and uh, let's look at one for a Cisco device. So I have um, um, a script here that just basically goes out and says uh, set the SNMP host, and the next one just does a show SNMP host. So you can basically configure it and then quickly see what the results are. Um, an easy case to, uh, to use. And so. We create a new one here, again, we're going to give it a name and show you how this is done here. So you're going to find an action you want. I'm going to pick some at random here just for the sake of exercise here. So let's say we want to do something like that one there. And so you select the task, apply that, and then you need to select the action. Uh, um, oh, this one is a target list task. Target list, a target list task. If you were to have a target list, I'm sorry, a target list action, Let's pick one here that's maybe a better, uh, like a resync select. If it, a resync action has targets. In that case, you're going to add targets here. And you're going to say, what devices do I want it to run against? You may not want it to run against all, maybe just a few. Add selection done. And then um, apply that. Then you can add more if you want to here. Um, and you can basically just save it, and then you can execute it, and it will execute in that order. Um, just to note, though, that the default here is parallel. What will happen by default is it's going to go out and try to run all your actions all at the same time. You may want that in some cases. But if you do want to um, execute them in a particular order, you're going to want to use sequential uh, best effort or halt on error. So best effort means that you might have 20 scripts in there, and uh, you want it to run them all even if one fails along the way. Versus halt on error means if, if, if the fifth one fails, it will halt everything and stop. Um, there's, there are definitely use cases for both, but just be aware that that's uh, some operational modes there that you will need to uh, decide on how you want to use this. So that's a very uh, powerful thing as well to group the actions. Okay, that was a quick rundown on um, on uh, group operations, how to group things and run things as groups. And uh, I think that's going to conclude the recorded portion.